Hi there, and welcome to Social Work Shorts. Um, this is Megan Mitchell with Agents of Change Social Work Test Prep, and I am excited to announce that I will be starting these Social Work Shorts to go over topics that may be confusing or tricky to remember for your licensing exam. These are gonna be very short, about 10 to 15 minute videos to help you really understand the difference between big item topics that you might see on the exam. So today I'm excited. Our first topic is transference versus counter transference. What is the difference? How do I remember them? You um, definitely will probably see examples of both, both transference and counter transference on your licensing exam. So let's dive right in. Transference. The definition of transference is redirection of a client's feelings onto the therapist or clinician. Um, transference in clinical work is inevitable. Um, it is bound to happen. And this might come out in both positive and negative ways. And I will give some examples um, of both some positive transference and some negative transference. And um, it's just important to note that if this does occur, that you can explore it with the client so you can get dig a little bit deeper and unpack what's really going on there. So transference, what are some examples? An example of transference might be that a client becomes angry at you during a session when discussing their toxic relationship with their spouse. Um, they are projecting, they are redirecting those feelings of anger, anxiety, um, distress about their relationship onto you. This is very, very, very normal. It's very, very common, but it is an example of transference. Another example is that a client tells you she feels calm after sessions because you remind her of her mother. She's having these memories um, come up about her mom. You remind her of her mom, so she feels very calm, very settled after your sessions. Those would be transference because she's redirecting those feelings onto the therapist, onto you as the clinician. Then we have counter-transference. What is counter-transference? Counter-transference is a redirection of a therapist's feelings towards or about a client. So this is something that brings in us as the therapist some sort of feelings that stems from a client that we're working with. Um, a very big sign that as a therapist, you might be experiencing counter transference is if you have boundary issues with the client. You might notice you're going out of your way, um, doing a little bit more for a certain client. That probably means it's time to look a little bit deeper, understand why you're doing that for that client. Maybe this client is very pleasant to be around, reminds you of a close friend, um, a, a colleague, and that might be why you have boundary issues. Um, it's important to know that countertransference is inevitable. It's not inevitably a horrible thing. Um, some people think transference and countertransference is really bad. It's inevitable. It's important to understand how we respond to these feelings. That's what's important. And oftentimes it may even occur without us being aware. This is why it's so important to have supervision, um, speak to trusted colleagues when these type of feelings do come up because we might not, it might not be obvious to us that we are experiencing these feelings. So I have a few examples of counter-transference. The first would be a client, to, a therapist may be reacting more positively towards a client that reminds them of a close friend. So in your practice, you might notice that you really look forward to sessions with a particular client, and this might be because they're bringing up feelings in you that remind you of someone else. So that would be an example of counter-transference. Another one, a therapist feels inadequate when working with a challenging client. So say every time you work with this client, you go home thinking um, just really negatively about yourself. I'm not a good therapist. Um, I'm not good enough. That would be an example of countertransference because there's feelings about a client that are coming up in you. Um, lastly, a therapist feels down and depressed after sessions with a depressed client. This would be another example um, of countertransference because these feelings are coming up in you that are coming from the client um, and you're kind of projecting them. So those are just a few examples of counter-transference, but I do want to remind you that it's always important that you come up with your own examples. Um, these are just some examples that help me remember. Um, always coming, a common theme that I'm going to say throughout all of my sessions is find something that works for you. Um, 
when you can come up with your own examples, when you go to sit down to take that test, it's gonna stick with you a little bit longer than just reading a definition and memorizing. So definitely, I challenge you to come up with your own example of transference and your own example of countertransference. And now I'm going to give you a little memory trick. This is how I learned the difference between transference and countertransference. It might work for you, it might not work for you. The first one is transference. How do I remember an example of transference on the exam? Um, the memory trick here is transference starts with the letter T. How I remember it is feelings redirected to the therapist. Transference to the therapist. And then we have countertransference starts with the letter C. Um, my memory trick here is feelings redirected to the client. Um, so that's how I remember it, T therapist, C to the client. Um, and that has worked for me. I will give you another example of each transference and countertransference. Um, for those of you that watch This Is Us, there is a um, few episodes where Randall is working with his therapist and the therapist is noticing some transference issues. She says, I think that you chose me as your counselor because I remind you a lot of your mom. And it, he has to sit with that and think about that. So that's transference because he's redirecting those feelings about his mom onto the therapist. Transference. Countertransference. Another example here is if maybe we are having some sort of um, negative feelings towards a client because they remind us of a, a sibling or a parent that we don't have a good relationship with. So if I have a client that's constantly coming and complaining all the time, that might remind me of a coworker I have that constantly complains all the time. And I might not really look forward to these sessions. Um, that would be countertransference because I'm redirecting those feelings to the client. There are feelings that stem from how I am interacting with the client. So that would be C, countertransference. It's a memory trick that works for me. Um, it may work for you, so feel free to use it and see if this will be something that works. So that was a very quick overview of transference versus countertransference. Um, like I said, come up with examples from your own life, from your own practice. Um, what's important is not knowing what transference and countertransference is, but what's most important is how do we address transference and countertransference? So we cannot just go ahead and ignore it. That would be doing a disservice to ourselves and to our clients. So it's important that we realize when these, these different feelings and these issues of transference and countertransference come up. And then also um, it's important to process it. So if we see there's some transference issues, if the client's constantly saying, oh, you remind me so much of my mom, I love coming to the therapy sessions with you. It would be important to just address that with the client, dig a little bit deeper, unpack that, and see why they're, they're identifying with you and making that connection between their mother and you. If we are starting to experience counter transference, so if we're having feelings that um, every time we work with a client, we're just feeling angry, we're feeling down, or we notice we're really going out of our way, or maybe having some boundary issues, um, we're kind of, um, you know, doing more than we would for a certain client, that's when you might want to discuss it with a colleague or a supervisor, because it's important that we ourselves address why we're feeling like this, why we're doing this. And um, as I stated, we might not be aware of it, clients might also not be aware of it. So it's just important that you bring it to the surface and you address it. Um, it's very, very good if you have these type of feelings that you are seeking out supervision to talk it through with a supervisor or a trusted colleague. So very, very, very common, important that we address it. So I hope that those were some helpful examples, some ho helpful tricks and tips to remember the difference between transference and countertransference and that you will get those questions right when you encounter them on the exam. If you like the content, please check out my YouTube channel. I do drop free content. I also have a paid study series. I have seven big topics that I go over, and this is $80 for all seven sessions. I have PowerPoints, I have practice questions, and um, also an audio to go along with each of those big topics. All seven sessions are available for purchase for $80, but if there's like an individual topic that you just be, are feeling like you'd like a little bit extra, I also have individual sessions for sale for $15. You can check it out at the website below. 
Um, but I will continue to keep dropping this monthly free content um, with some tips and tricks to help you along the way. Um, if you have any questions, my contact information is there. And I do want to finish off today by just reminding you that you got this. This might be the first time you're sitting for the exam. This might be the fourth time. It's a, the journey is different for everyone. Find what works for you. There's a lot of information out there and what works for me might not work for you. It's all about finding um, the best fit. Um, remember you got this. Um, all it is is a test. It does not have power over you. You have power over this test. So I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. And remember, you got this. Thank you for tuning in.